it's not as big of a scene as Nashville or Austin are, but there is a great scene of very talented and um, artists in LA who do appreciate like the history and and are trying to keep it alive. Um, you know, I'm part of a a small record label called California Country Records out in Los Angeles, and uh, it's run by two women who are in a band called Calico the Band, who are very influenced by California country. And, you know, and we work together a lot and work on refining our sound and, and paying homage to all those great artists that came before us. So absolutely, it definitely influenced by California country and a, a little bit of everything. <laughs> She 
sits and waits for the man who will come over calling again and each time they call her hatred it grows and burns like a fire that only she knows well they Once she was a young and so pretty A girl too pretty, they told her Irresistible And though she was a young What she had was so rare That the risk of getting burned Wouldn't stop those who dared And now they In her bed Once there was a one There were hundreds of men Lined up to stoke the fires Beneath her skin And now they can't put it out They can't put it out How? favorite as far as stories go is the second song I did the poor Cleopatra song about the old mining town in Arizona that one took me a long time to construct because I just um, you know the town itself has such an interesting history with the copper mine and you know basically they found copper in this mountain built this town zigzagging up the side of it in this amazing way that if you as you're driving up to this city it just it, it's like switchbacks up the mountain. Like if you're walking from street to street in the town, you climb stairs to the next street because it's above you on the mountain. So it's just such a unique place. And we, we toured through there a couple times and I just kept thinking, this town needs a song. And, uh, you know, so I learned more about the copper mines and the fires, you know, the fact that uh, the, the mine one time burned for 20 years and they couldn't put this fire out. And I was just so fascinated thinking about a fire burning for 20 years because they wanted to get copper out of this mountain. And then when I learned that, you know, it had a very famous brothel in town as well, I started to kind of draw parallels between like maybe what it would be like to be a woman in a wild west mining town and, and these fires and just started to connect all the dots. And, and then once I learned that 
Jerome was on Cleopatra Hill, it all sort of came full circle, and I said, okay, we're writing a song about Cleopatra, and, uh, and it's become one of my favorite songs to sing, and, and I am pretty proud of how it came together, so... Uh, and I, I love writing songs that are story songs these days, especially since I spend so much of my time traveling and just trying to absorb stories. And there's so many great stories to be told through songs. And lately, that's more where I've been focusing my writing. I'll sing you a traveling song A song about searching, about moving along I may not be rich, may never well be But in all of my travels I've got what I a young girl on the way to Austin on a bus ride one mid-April day she asked me about the guitar in my head I told her about all the shows I had planned she told me that she was 18 and for the last seven weeks how she'd been living by the Mexican border After a flood Rebuilding homes in the mold and the mud For folks who are living with less And most of us could ever fathom, I'd guess She had only a pillow and a small bag of clothes She'd been on three buses since before the sun rose Oh, how inspired I was By someone so young who would give up so much To help all those people who could never help her Spending her time just to better this world Flying home from that very same trip On a flight out of Dallas I had the pleasure to sit by a man Who was not at all pleased to be Stuck back in coach with a person like me When a mother came on with a child She smiled and I was stuck in the middle of that three hour ride With his elbow periodically digging my side He got mad later on in the flight When the attendant did not have the bourbon he liked oh, I just closed my eyes, thought back to that bus Wondering where that young girl I met was I've met all kinds of folks on the road Those who are wise and those who don't know The only true thing that we have in this life Is a chance to wake up Travels I've got what I 
plenty of songs about myself and I, I continue to <laughs> you know because we all go through very similar experiences I feel like you know there are plenty of songs to be written about our own personal experience that people can find 
themselves in. Um, but actually, and it, it, it's funny that it took me as long as it did to come around to the story songs because my, my degree is actually in journalism. I used to write for newspapers, and then I started writing songs, and I didn't really write stories. I just kind of just wrote whatever seemed natural at the moment. But um, the more I get into writing story songs and telling people stories, or and so my latest album is, you know, I was touring full time at that point. You know, my first two albums, I was kind of dabbling in touring. I would take my vacation or something and, and go on tour. But you know, I've been on the road full time for about five years now, and so this latest album is all about either places I've been or people I've met along the way. There are still some songs about my own personal journey with learning to become a traveling singer-songwriter, which I never expected to find myself doing. Uh, I, just, I just kept coming back to it. It's the only thing I really love to do. And I decided I had to... Life is too short. <laughs> I didn't want to look back and think, what if I had just gone for it? So yeah, it's a good call. Well, thank you. I, I'd like to think I made a good decision. Yeah, you <laughs> so. did. You made a great decision. <laughs> the moon hardly shines down in Echo Canyon. It just hangs around about an hour a night. And a sliver of sky between narrow horizons You don't even notice as it passes me by The crickets are calling across Echo Canyon A chilly wind moans to join in the song Then a coyote howls out there in the distance I ain't going nowhere So I'll just sing along Ooh, ooh, ooh On a lonely Ooh, ooh, ooh There's nothing but nothing for miles around. Around a snake on the rim along Echo Canyon spooked my sweet mare. I ended up thrown. Now days turn to night down here at the bottom where I'm shivering and singing.
just keep that smile a whole to a time as you turn another mile and the further that you go the further behind you leave what you know it's been a month seems to hurt less that step to the lights that aid to impress but I am not going down without a fight for this coveted crown there is no prize for giving in how to yodel sort of threw me into that that realm of classic country which and it's not the reason I learned how to yodel actually I learned how to yodel because I was a huge fan of Jewel in high school and she is a phenomenal yodeler and I was just I just loved everything she did and someone in college sent me this bootleg of her yodeling as an encore and I had never seen her play live and I was just floored and I was like I need to learn how to yodel nobody yodels anymore and, you know, and then it took me a little while to slowly wind my way back in time and, you know, start listening to the Slim Whitmans and the Jimmy Rogers and these people who were these classic yodelers and Patsy Montana, who was a great yodeler back in the day. And, and it's really interesting. I got to teach a yodeling workshop earlier this year at a festival in San Diego. So I really dove deeper into the history of it. And really between the mid 1800s and the mid 1900s, yodeling was a huge part of American music. You know, it's kind of brought over by the immigrants from Germany and Austria and this whole Bavarian region. And, 
and they were some of the ones who started these initial traveling singing troops in in the America in in America in you know the mid 1800s and it became it continued to be a strong uh, technique that was used by a lot of singers. It, it eventually became more of a, a country music thing once pop music started to change. And, you know, and then kind of I feel like it was sort of rock and roll came along in like the 50s, 60s, and the yodeling slowly went away. And, and actually, I love in my research, I came across the fact that Bill Haley, before he had a big hit with Rock Around the Clock, he was a champion cowboy yodeler. And, <laughs> and so it's just really interesting that it was, a, it was a huge part of American music for a century, and now it's kind of fallen by the wayside and just trying to kind of re revitalize it. And it's just, it's a fun thing to throw in there because people don't hear it very often these days, and it's a fun technique to use. to have the band because I have a fantastic band and they just add so much to the music and you know uh, but at the same time I do love these kind of intimate solo performances as well and especially you know I do a lot of house concerts and a lot of listening rooms and to be able to connect with the audience it feels a little more personal um, you know and just to be able to tell more stories and just interact on a little bit different level than sometimes you feel like you can when you have the whole band so I kind of love them equally. Like it's like day to day. I love that I get to do both, you know. So because um, I do have certain songs that just aren't as good with the band because they are more they're softer, they're more singer songwriter, and then but then the rock and songs trying to do that just me and a guitar. I kind of feel like well, this is losing something. So I I don't know if I could say which I love more, but I'm glad I get to do both. <laughs> <laughs> Have you toured with a band before? Yeah, and I do take my band a couple times a year. We go to Texas and back. Uh, since we live in Southern California, it's a little easier to get to Texas. I'm not, you know, I'm slowly trying to get them farther and farther. You know, we're building up our contacts and, 
you know, I feel like Texas is one of the one places where you can play just about every night of the week. So like we always know we can make money in Texas and it's just a matter of, you know, getting to know more people farther along, you know, farther east. But I've been, you know, this tour, I was up in the northeast for the past week. And before that, I was in the southeast doing kind of Florida and Georgia. And we were in Nashville for the Americana Music Festival. That was a big opportunity for us. We got to meet a lot of people in Nashville. So I'm hoping, you know, next year I can finally construct a larger tour to get the, the full band across the country. So... Ah, 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 ah. 